Hey monkeys, how you doing? Damien Keys here. All right, five reasons why your band is shit. All right, hang on a minute. That is a bit clickbaity, I'll give you that. And I don't think your band is shit. But there's a serious thing here because if you've clicked this and, and you will have clicked this because you've gone, oh shit, it's fear, is my band shit? And if it is, what can I do about it? And so therefore, there are certain traits that I'm seeing all of the time. Stuff that crops up when I talk to band after band after band that is really hampering you. So I wanna talk about things that you might do. I'm not saying your band is shit, even though the title says that your band is shit. But I'm not saying that, but what I am saying is if these things are things that you are doing, you can probably do better. But if I called it five things that you could do better, then no fucker would click that. So deal with it. Fuck the police coming straight from the underground. Number one, you rehearse once a week. Like once a fucking week. Like there's 52 weeks in a year. Do you think that's it? Are you gonna do 52 rehearsals in a year? But then you've got Christmas and holidays, blah, 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 blah. so you're probably gonna rehearse, what, 40 times a year? Is that enough? Can you actually get away with competing on a high level and take your band to the area that you want to do, where you've gotta write and you've gotta, you've gotta get tight, you've gotta put shows together? Can you do all of that in a rehearsal which is three or four hours a week? I'm telling you, no. No! You need to match your workload with your expectation. And by that, I mean, if your expectation is, we wanna take this band as far as it can go, that's your expectation. What's the workload? We'll meet up once a week. I mean, come on, it doesn't work like that. That, that is something I hear all of the time and people going, I know, but I've got a full-time job and James can't make it because he lives in a different city. Fine. But that, that doesn't actually mean anything. What that means is those are your problems, those are your issues that you have to overcome. The reality is, is if you wanna take this band as far as it can possibly go, to the nth degree, and when I usually ask bands, they usually have a few answers before they go, we wanna headline Reading, or we wanna play a stadium, or if you wanna do that, are you gonna do it momentum-wise once a week? Mm, I don't think you are, I don't think you are. Like, like what can you physically do in like, once a week with all the shit that you need to do, what is it that you can achieve in three or four hours a week together? It's just not enough. There's like 24 hours in a day, seven days a week that you're leaving just to do three or four hours of get together to actually rehearse. And then, and then you're gonna try and put a, what, an entire week's worth of shit into one rehearsal. It's just not gonna work. It's just not enough. So this is about expectation. If you wanna take this to the next level and get your band really, really, as far as it can possibly go, then you gotta find time and you've gotta actually get together. And if your guitarist lives in Norwich and you live in Manchester, you got a problem. So you need to sort those problems out, but you need to be getting together two or three times a week, at least. I mean, the more time you put into this makes sense, the more your band's gonna take off. What's really interesting, when, when I'm looking back at bands that I was talking to six months or a year ago, like some of them are motored ahead and some of them are kind of stuttering and most of the ones that are motoring ahead are putting in time. They're putting in a lot of time and hard work and the ones that are stuttering are making excuses and just not really going anywhere. So this is a big one. This is a really, really big one. If you are rehearsing once a week, getting together with the band once a week, it's not enough. Number two, you think you need a manager or a live agent and you're bringing 20 to 30 people to a show. Like, you don't need a manager for that. That's just lazy. If you say we need a manager and you're not managing at that level, then you either need to learn more about what you're doing or stop being a lazy bastard because bands who need managers is because they've got so much shit flying their way that they're going, fuck, I can't deal with all this stuff. You know, labels are phoning us up and we've got offered these tours and like we're trying to we're trying to organize the social media people and now we've got a budget for PR and all of a sudden it's like that's crazy big and, and things are about to take off. But until you get to that point, there's three, four or five of you in a band. Like, come on. Like if you're bringing 20 to 30 people to a show, let's face it, if there's four of you in a band and you're bringing 20 people to a show in your local area, that's, that's, that's five people each. Like, come on. Come on. Come on. So before we start thinking about a manager to manage this project, who's gonna manage it? You, you are, you're gonna manage this project. This is your band, this is your project. This is you managing it. You can't just go, I'm a creative. I just create. And someone else can deal with that shit. No, like that doesn't work like that. 
There's, there's this many bands and there's this many managers. So for you to attract a manager, it makes sense supply and demand, that isn't gonna work. So in order to attract a manager or a live agent or anyone else in the music industry, you've got to actually prove it yourself. Proof, that's what you've got to do. And by doing that, you've got to prove it works. You've got to be able to get people engaging on your social media. You've got to people get, to get people down to gigs. You've got to get people actually wanting your music. Hey, fuck it, maybe even buying your music. Let's go crazy. So. If you're saying we need a manager and you're bringing 20 to 30 people to a show, I'm calling you out. That's fucking lazy. Or you're clueless and either one is changeable. If you're clueless, you can learn. I mean, there's fucking 200 videos on my YouTube channel with loads of information that you can learn about the music industry, about, about getting your music out there, about distribution, about engagement, about social media, about everything else. So just fucking get on my YouTube and subscribe and go and check out the content and learn. And if that's your clueless, and if you're not clueless, if you're if you're just lazy, then man up. There's four of you in a band. Like take some responsibility and manage your own project. So when should you get a manager? You should get a manager when you physically cannot manage this project. It's just gone too crazy. And if you're getting 20 to 30 people to a local gig, it's not then. Number three. You release music with no strategy whatsoever. Now this is huge. This is something I hear all of the time. So when someone says, we're making our EP or we've made our EP, what do we do next? And I'm like, great, what are we gonna do next? Because we haven't planned anything, we've just got here. And I, it's like, like, like I call it the happily ever after. When you just go, here's our album, and there's no, no story before it, you just go, and here's the end. And we all lived happily ever after, the end. It doesn't work like that. So when you've got no strategy, what are we gonna do? What are we making this music for? And the amount of times people go, Spotify, I'm gonna put on Spotify. Actually, we're gonna put on iTunes at the same time. Like why, when you're an unsigned band, I'm not talking about a big band, but when you're an unsigned band and you're gonna put your stuff on iTunes and Spotify, does that make sense? Answer that question. Because if I can go onto iTunes and buy your album for nine pounds or eight pounds or whatever you're gonna sell it for, if I can do that, and then I go, oh, or can I go to Spotify and listen to it for free? And you go, yeah, you can. And I go, so what's the catch? Do I have to like, do I have to like leave my house and actually walk for 20 miles to go and listen to this for free? No, no, just a click. So I can click this button and pay eight pounds for your CD, or I can click this button and get it for free. And that doesn't make sense. The other thing that people say is, we just want to use this music to build our audience. So I'm like, okay, how do you, like that, that's, Fine, yeah, we can do that. We can build an audience. We can actually, we can use the music to look after our audience. But how? What's the strategy behind that? Because what I see is, here's our next demo. Now, if you're going to do that, if that's going to be your strategy, fucking A, that's brilliant. We're going to put music out to look after our fan base, but it can't be just one track a month or one track every two months. What you're doing there is you're taking the old school rhetoric of trying to sell music and you're trying to fucking cram it in the asshole of, 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 trying to make free free music and build an audience. It doesn't really work like that. So what you need to be doing is thinking, we either make free content like YouTubers do pretty much every single day to keep the audience going, to build momentum so that we can monetize something else, or we're gonna put stuff out once a month, we're gonna build, we're gonna find a way that we can sell the music, we're gonna build the momentum. If, you know, anyone who's watching this, who still thinks that you can make money from selling music, or that's the best option, you're a fucking idiot. Like, we are not in that time anymore. You can absolutely make money in your band, but if you think that's the best way of doing it, in this day, you are wrong. If you think making an album is the best way of making money, it isn't. There's loads of ways. There's, there's, there's live tickets, there's merchandise, but streaming is not one of them. Because when you get signed to a label, unless you're a really big brand, when you get signed to a label and you're getting 0.0045p per click, and then the record company goes, well, we want 15%. I mean, how much are you gonna get as the bass player of that band? Nothing. So come on. So pick the strategy. Which is it gonna be? Are we gonna try and build the audience? Are we gonna try and look after the audience? And therefore we have to make the product and make the music to do that. Or do we wanna sell the music? In which case we have a different strategy for that. But if we just go, here's money, here's pay, and here's building an audience, they're three completely different strategies. So come on. Let's get real. This is 2017. It's about to be 2018 for anyone who's watching this in a month's time. And so therefore, we've got to think about today's music industry and not 1989.
Number four, you're in an unsigned band that plays a gig for an hour. A fucking hour. Scratch that, 40 minutes. No, fuck that, 30 minutes. If, you, if you're an unsigned band and you're playing a gig for 30, no, fuck it. 20 minutes, anything more, bored. Like you're an unsigned band, you're trying to get people down to your gigs. So, it's like an hour? Like why are bands trying to play for 45 minutes to an hour? Because we've got the songs, we've got the songs, we've got the songs, we should just carry on playing. It's a fucking crazy amount of time. Get on the stage, fucking tear it up, and get off the stage again. And your audience will just love it. Leave them wanting more. And you know, when you're all sitting around the table and you're going, well, we've only got 20 minutes to actually get on and do our shit. It's like, well, we're only gonna pick the best song. And you know, you want to be in that situation where you're going, we can't leave that out, we physically can't. And someone else is going, I know, but we, we can't leave this out, we physically can't leave this out. So you're there having an argument about, well, how are we gonna cram these songs into 20 minutes? That is a good situation. When you've got 15 minutes, there's songs in your set which are filler and not killer. If you've got a 20 minute set, you have got enough time to get on and rip someone's fucking face off. And that is what you're supposed to do as an unsigned level. And then when you're Coldplay or when you when you're Muse, at that point you can go and you can play three hours and everyone will stay because they've paid for your ticket. But we are not there yet. We are an unsigned band. Our job is to do something remarkable that people who have not heard of you, who are at the show, will watch it and go, I need to tell everybody about this band. They were fucking awesome. And the way you do that is by doing something fucking awesome. And number five, any one of you who said, people don't go to live gigs anymore. I mean, like, that's just not true. Like, last night I was in London watching Royal Blood. There was 12,000 motherfuckers there. There was plenty of people. And what they're doing tonight, they're playing the same venue again to another 12,000 people. People do go and see shows. If you're going, you yeah, but Royal Blood and Royal Blood, they're really good. So what you're saying is, people go and see Royal Blood shows because they're fucking great. No one comes to see your show People will go and see a show if you give them a reason to go to your show. But at the moment, you are playing the short-term game and you're getting angry that people aren't supporting. That's another thing as well, that is another thing. People who say, support your local music scene, and then they wanna get paid for their gig. Like, if you want people to support the local music scene, put on a fucking free gig and you support the local music scene. See how you like it. But don't blame the audience and say, the audience isn't turning up to our show. No one goes to gigs anymore because it's too expensive. Well, take your fucking costs down. Like, if you actually want to build an audience, it costs money. It's called advertising. That is a thing. And like, nowadays people don't want to spend the money on advertising. But back in the day, it was TV. You wouldn't expect to put an advert on TV for free because in your head you are programmed to believe that putting stuff on TV costs money. So why are you programmed to think that anything else shouldn't cost money? Just go and do a gig, build the audience, get out there, spread the word, and then monetize something else when you're an unsigned band. You can do that. But at the moment, this idea that nobody turns up to live gigs is not good enough. No one turns up to not very good bands. That's the case. I go to plenty of live gigs. I go loads. And there's some of them I really enjoy and there's loads of people there and I can see why. And there's some of them where there's not many people and I can see why. So stop making that excuse and start thinking about why people aren't coming to your gigs, not loads of local gigs. Because if I showed you a bunch of bands and said, why aren't people coming to this band's gigs? You'd probably answer me the right answer. So start thinking, why aren't people coming to your gigs? What can you do to make it better? For a start, don't play for a fucking hour. Start thinking about how can you get on stage, tear it up, are your songs good enough? Is the product good enough? Have you marketed good enough? Is the band good enough? If not, that's easy, we can fix that. We can improve it. And again, get on the YouTube and start hunting around for ways on my videos that you can improve your product, you can improve your band, and you can improve spreading the word about it. Because the reality is, is if the band is good enough, like if the Chili Peppers came to this city and did a secret gig, the Foo Fighters did this not long back, they played a venue in Brighton called the Concord 2, which held about 500, and on the day, they called their band something completely different, and they just told a couple of people, like we're talking two or three people, and it was a warm-up show. Like there were so many people that the place inside was rammed, and there was the same amount of people outside, because word spread like wildfire. Why? Because every fucker wants to go and see the Foo Fighters. It's a massive big deal. So because the product's amazing, everybody wants to go. Your job is to make the product so amazing that everyone wants to be a part of it. If people aren't showing up, it's not them. So that's my five tips of if your band is shit. Now, like, I know I'm gonna get loads and loads of comments below calling me a twat, but, because I get that twice a day anyway. However, like, 
take this good nature that I'm not saying your band is shit, but if there's, if there's things on this video that you are doing, you can fix these things. You can improve your band. Like stop thinking that the world is against you and stop thinking that it's just your luck and actually change these things. And I promise you, it will make a massive difference. It will make a massive difference to your band. It will make a massive difference to the Ghostbusters. It'll make a massive difference to your audience and your fan base. And those are the most important things to look after. More importantly, I need you to like this, or if you think I'm a twat, then dislike it, that's fine. Uh, comment below, obviously I'd like a like. Comment below, subscribe to the YouTube. If you're on Facebook, subscribe to the YouTube, uh, and come and hit me up. Tell me your thoughts, tell me if you think I'm wrong. I want the discussion, I wanna know if I'm wrong, why am I wrong about this? So hit me up, subscribe, and otherwise I'll see you guys tomorrow.